Welcome to another mythology video. This is a special mathematical ferris wheel, a geometrical gem that has only recently been discovered. Now notice how the cabins of the ferris wheel always just touch and brush along their neighbors. Pretty mesmerizing and impossible looking, isn't it? Here's another example of the same kind of mathematical magic. Now these newly discovered miracles use what are called shapes of constant widths which are already very famous for their repertoire of fantastic geometrical feats. So let's begin with a crash course on shapes of constant widths and a quick survey of their most famous and impressive tricks. Here we go. First question, how wide is Homer? Very, yep. <laughs> but more precisely we can trap him between vertical bars and he's that wide, right? Actually for mathematicians Homer is a man of many widths. In fact, there are infinitely many widths, one for each possible direction of the parallel bars. Here the bars point in a different direction and here is the corresponding width of Homer. And here's another one and another one. Of course, there is this one special mathematical shape that is famous for having the same width in all direction. What shape is that? Too easy, right? <laughs> the circle, of course. So there's the circle, there's the width, and in all directions you see it's always the same. Now it turns out, and this surprises almost everyone when they first hear it, the circle is not the only shape with just one width. The simplest of these non-circular shapes of constant widths are the cabins of our ferris wheel. These guys there. To construct our cabins, start with three corners of an equilateral triangle and draw just the right sized circles centered at the corners like this. One, two, three. Three corners and three circles. And the cabin shape we are after is the curvy triangle in the middle. This shape is called the Rouleau Triangle, named after the 19th century German engineer Franz Rouleau. That guy there. <laughs> the constant width of Rouleau's triangle is just the common radius of the three circles we began with. Let's make sure that this is really, really true. So okay, the width here is just the radius of the circle around this corner. And then it's clear that the width stays the same as we change directions. So there. Just move it around like this and you can see which is always the same. It turns out there are many other shapes of constant widths. For example, just as we began with an equilateral triangle to construct Rouleau's triangle, we can similarly begin with any regular polygon with an odd number of corners. Here are the corners of a regular pentagon. Now draw a circle centered at each of the five corners and passing through the two opposite corners. Here's the first such circle. And here are the other ones. And as for Rouleau, the curvy pentagon we've just captured in the middle has constant widths. And this is as easy to show as we did for Rouleau's triangle. And here's the constant width shape obtained from a regular seven gone. And so on. A first challenge for you. What goes wrong if we try this construction with an even-sided polygon? Share your thoughts in the comments. But Rouleau-ish polygons are not even close to all there is. Here's another very simple and very powerful method of construction. Highlight the pentagram inside this constant width pentagon. Each side of the pentagram is a radius of one of the five generating circles of the pentagon. So the length of these pentagram sides is exactly the constant width of the curvy pentagon. Now, <laughs> At the risk of incurring the wrath of some monster, summoned by our demonic shape, let's deform the pentagram. Here we only have to make sure that overall all the five side lengths stay the same. Now draw in the five circles, again one centered at each corner like this. Ooh, magic. <laughs> Can you see what happened? Arguing exactly as before, whatever the wonky pentagram, the resulting wonky pentagon in the middle, <laughs> must be a shape of constant widths. Pretty, huh? Here are a few more. And you can do the same starting with all those devilish stars hiding in their other polygons.
Now, if you like your mats tactile, you can also build physical models of these flexing stars. Have a look. Now, just in case you're wondering, I built this star from hexaw blades. <laughs> These constant width shapes are pretty incredible, right? But hold your applause, wait until you've seen some of their amazing tricks. First trick, pin a constant width shape between two pairs of parallel bars forming a square. Now rotate the shape, then the rotating shape touches all four sides of the square at all times. Simply magical, isn't it? This setup can be used to build a physical machine that can carve these kinds of rounded squares. I link to some super nice movies in the description. Second trick. There actually exist coins in the shape of the ruler triangles and its regular seven gone relative. Why? Of course they look very cool, but there are also practical considerations. Coin operated machines identify coins by looking at them edge on and measuring their widths. So to work properly, these machines require coins of constant widths. Also, it turns out that the non-circular coins over there have less area than the circular one. And therefore, everything else being equal, these coins are cheaper to produce than the circular one. Which can't be bad, right? Third trick. Here's a very famous question, supposedly a standard in high stakes job interviews. Why are manhole covers round? Well, obviously. To cover the round holes, of course, right? <laughs> That's the funniest answer, though maybe not the one that will score you the job. So what answer are they expecting? The standard answer, and a very good one, is because the circular lids can never fall into the slightly smaller circular holes. So just have a look, right? So you can turn around this way, that way, any way you want, they will never fall in. That is not true for some other shapes, such as squares. All right, so let's have a look. These shapes can definitely fall into the corresponding holes. Huh? In this position, they just fall in. And this would be an obvious danger to the workers below. Okay, so now you are an expert on manholes and you can ace that next job interview, right? Wrong. <laughs> because the candidate who comes right after you gets the same question and smugly replies, well, actually, Manholes don't have to be round. And of course, she is correct. Any manhole of constant width would be just as safe. So that's just a rule of one, right? Turn it around, turn it any way you want. You know, it will never fall into the hole. Fourth trick. Non-circular rollers can make for a perfectly smooth ride. However, you can't be too blasé with shapes of constant width. For example, though we can make nice ruler rollers, Making a car with ruler wheels would result in a pretty bumpy ride. <laughs> Having said that, there's also a very clever constant width trick that circumvents this problem. I'll explain how this miracle car works a little later. How do all these tricks work? Well, except for the final crazy car, all of the tricks can be easily explained with the defining property of shapes of constant widths. But, as well as this defining property, shapes of constant widths have a number of other non-obvious and very interesting properties. My absolute favorite among these properties is Barbier's theorem. This theorem says that all, absolutely all shapes of the same constant widths also have the same perimeter as the circle. So all those guys over there have the same perimeter. Amazing, amazing, amazing! <laughs> Second challenge for you explain or prove why this is so for the special case of the star-based shapes that I showed you. Here's a hint. The key ingredient of the proof is to show that in all of these stars, the sum of the spiky angles is the same, which is a very beautiful result in itself, don't you think? So now it's time for another ride on our Ferris wheel. Let's figure out what it is about constant width shapes that leads to the cabins of the Ferris wheel smoothly touching as they do. To sneak up on the question, imagine that in between those two bars there is a shape of constant widths, right there. Imagine. <laughs> now slide the bars together until they touch the shape on either side. Let's mark a point of contact on the left side there. 
What about the right side? Of course there must be some point of contact on the right since otherwise we could bring in the right wall a little. It turns out that there is exactly one point of contact on the right and the second point is located directly opposite the contact point on the left, like this. Why? Why can there not be a contact point somewhere else, say down there? Simply put, because the green bar is longer than the distance between the blue walls. Let me explain. Our mystery shape supposedly has constant widths, but the widths in the direction of the green bar would have to be at least as long as the green bar, and so longer than the widths determined by the blue walls. Of course, that's impossible for our constant width shape. So again, if you wedge a shape of constant widths between two parallel bars, the two bars touch the shape in exactly one point on each side, and these points are located directly opposite each other. Okay, so let's now use this property to explain our Ferris wheel. First, let's look again at the ruler triangle spinning inside the square. There. Pay attention to the touching points on the left and right walls. And notice that they really are always directly opposite each other. Let's duplicate the whole picture so we have two squares side by side. Now rotate our ruler triangles in unison. Because of the opposite points property, it is now clear that the two shapes must always touch at the common point where they contact the middle wall. Instant magic. Next, here are the two ruler triangles again, this time in blue. Why in blue? Well, because I ran out of green. <laughs> I've also marked two corresponding points. Let's rotate the triangles again, focusing on the two points. The points move around, but of course are always in the same position relative to each other. So the line connecting the points is always horizontal and always has the same length. So now imagine that as the animation is running, you visually cancel out the moving of the points by moving the whole screen around in just the right way. What do you see? Well, you got it? Well, the points stay fixed and the triangles now rotate in unison around them. How neat is that? The same also clearly works no matter how the two shapes start out touching. Very pretty. <laughs> All right, let's do some more cloning. We can assemble multiple copies of our shape into any touching configuration. And when we rotate all the shapes in sync, all the touching will be maintained. And that's super, super duper pretty. Almost there. To construct our Ferris wheel, we simply relocate the rotation points and we arrange a suitable number of our triangles around a suitably sized circle. Perfect. Well, the ferris wheel actually is not moving and the passengers will be tipped out as the cabins rotate. But almost perfect. So to satisfy these fussy passengers, to make the cabins move around the wheel and to have them always point downward, we make one final adjustment. As the cabins are spinning in the counterclockwise direction, we make the ferris wheel rotate in the opposite, the clockwise direction. Ta-da! Exactly the same type of rotation combo produces the second effect I showed at the beginning. Also super duper nice, isn't it? And of course this does not only work for ruler triangles, everything I've shown just works as well for any shape of constant widths. But there's still one more layer of trickery and it has to do with the crazy car I showed you earlier. Let's focus on one of the wheels. There's a familiar ruler triangle in the middle doing its now familiar rotation within the little square. But there's also a second, larger constant width shape that rotates in unison with the ruler triangle. In turn, this dark gray shape is rotating inside a larger square. But there's more. The squares have the same center and the contact points of the two constant width shapes with their squares are always aligned. They're aligned, aligned, Aligned and aligned. Always aligned. This makes it clear how the larger shape is constructed from the ruler triangle. Just take any of its diameters 
and extended on both sides by segments of equal lengths. Right? Also very pretty. So you see how the orange bits swipe over the gray area and that makes up the other shape. But this means that if the frame of the car is attached to the inner square, then because the blue distance from the square to the ground is always the same, the car will move without any ups and downs, just like on proper circular wheels. Very ingenious, isn't it? But that's not all. Because the contact points of the two shapes are always aligned, we can also pull things apart like this. And if we now rotate the two shapes in unison, they will always touch. And this means that we can play our touching dance games with a combination of ruler triangles and their parallel shapes. And this opens up all sorts of possibilities for serious constant width fun. I'll finish with some animations based on this observation and the other things we talked about today. But before that, let me tidy up with some acknowledgements. The idea for the Ferris wheel is due to the Japanese computer scientist Kenichi Miura. In fact, when I saw him talk about this idea at the 2010 gathering for Gardner, he talked about a water wheel and not about a Ferris wheel. The idea for the crazy car is due to Claudia Masfera Leon and Sebastian von Wutenau Meyer who I think were still math students in Mexico when they made their discovery. And yours truly, the mythologer, put all the pieces together and nutted out the general theory. In the description I've linked to my write-up as well as to some other nice articles and videos about shapes of constant widths. And that's it from me for today. Enjoy the rest of the animations. Mm -hmm.